So what I've got here is the 6 series Nito. That goes all the way through the holes. That goes through the holes real. So at this point here what we simply have here we've got the two options. So if you come to a hose lock fitting or a click garden, garden, gardener, you've got this fitting here that's an optional. So you'll see that the hole through it you can click that straight on. You can now click straight in with that point. If you want to, you can actually take this off, the customer's tap, instead of doing it that way, and we've got this part here that's going to go straight onto the tap. So we would connect the holes, mains, water, into there, or with via that. Going through, but then at the other end you'll see we've also got a quick, quick release on that point. So we'll go around the other side and we'll show you. So at the moment in time this is connected up so the water comes out of this point and what we're doing is using the ball cock valve system. So you would then be in control of it. If that's the case what you do is let the tank breathe by leaving this point undone at the present moment so the tank can breathe. Even though it's got a vent on the top, it lets it breathe. If you're going to be working from a hydrant point, what you've got here is the overflow point. What you'd simply do is you would connect up to there instead, to the hydrant point. Making sure that you take the lid off, loosen the lid off a touch, because hydrant points fast flow, it will soon fill that system up. If you're working at the bottom setup, so what we're simply doing here is force feeding it from the customer's mains. What would simply happen is you would click into that point at the bottom there. You'd have both of that open, that would open, and that system open there. That would then give us mains water. It would fill the tank up with when it's not being used. But what you'd also have there is you'd have your overflow point on that side of it to come out of on the system so it overflows it comes out on a point down out of here on a pipe so it's protected from overflowing it's not going all over your van that gives us no restrictions again in the, in the system now when you're using it that way always remember that always look and keep an eye on your water flow Ow! because if you don't what can happen what can simply happen then is you're running short of water the machine will start vibrating erratically you'll get back and pull the trigger and it's working again because what you're doing is this machine is being force fed at that stage always check and check what level water you've got in the system itself we know we're right you've got the filter on that side there on protection so make sure that's clean at all times especially when you're using hydrant points we'll go back to the front so what simply happened is we're going to close this off we're going to open this up so at the moment in time what's simply happening is the water's in the tank we can leave the water in the tank and what you do at the end of the day is open this other valve at this side you can then drain the system off so this valve here would be open letting the water out of the system you would also make sure the prime and frost valve that's there is also open as well so all the system is a fully open system there's no problem you're frost protected when you come back to it turn this off leave that open while you prime the machine up get the machine all primed up And what you can do is work in either, either order you want to. Like I can say, if you just want to work off the water that's in the tank, you'd go that way. So what's happening now is the water itself, it's working off the tank water that's already in the tank. And you can see. So if we open that up, you'll see. If you want to drain it off, what you simply do is take that pipe off the top, connect it to the bottom and run it dry completely. And let your tank water come out at both ends. So we set up the boiler now at the moment. So we're all set up, we're obviously on the engine and everything else. What we've done is turn this down. So that's low pressure, the revs down slightly and what we're not doing at the moment. Now, like I say, if you're going on steam and you pull all the hose off the reel, we're running on a 10 meter, that's all we're running on at the moment. We've got all the nozzles here. You've got the color coded, so 15 degrees is yellow, black is 65 and they're the sizes, three, five, four, four, 
and the one that's in here is a 40 degree. Yeah, because that is white. And that is an 035. Steam gun, that will weep when we let go of the trigger. You've got a slight weep on there at the end of the line so it doesn't build up pressure and steam. Keep your primary frost valve open, which we're going to show in a little while. So what we do is to get it up to temperature quickly, we'll get rid of some of that water within the system so the temperature itself gets up there quickly. Make sure that you've got the plug in at this point or that valve is closed off at that point where that is now. Thermostat set at 90 and we'll get it up to temperature quickly by releasing water within the system so we're not hanging around, taking forever, going up at full pressure and everything else on that side of it. So we're all ready to rock and roll the machine itself. Like I said before, that's closed and that is open. So we've opened that to get the pressure out of the system. We'll turn the boiler on. So we're running off electric at the moment, not off the generator. We've already tested the generator, no problem there. And like I say, what we'll do is start the engine now, so you might still hear me. down here we'll then use that and put that into the system and we'll put that in to start off with so it's a 40 white 45 15 degree or 15 and the pencil nose of 15 so the machine itself now what we're doing is setting this up and we're going to switch it over so on this side of it now yeah we're going to switch this so that was on steam before, I'm going to put this into place and then we put, we've got a bung that's going to go into this point here so that is now bunged off, this part is turned off so we can hear ourselves think and what we're going to do next is open this valve at this point here now what you will see is that on there you've got zero at the bottom and you've also got zero at that bottom there as well so what we're going to do is just stop it and sort out on that side in a minute or two so you would do one valve at a time open it up, prime it up and then close it get the machinery as normal so your valve's open, prime and frost valve 
The engine rail is going to be turned very low down and so are these valves here. So this is turned down to minimal. And what we'll do is start the engine up. So when you're using the patio cleaner, obviously on that side of it you've got to be careful on the temperature, you get a heat surge. If you let go of the trigger and leave it for a period of time, that, but that temperature inside the boiler will increase. So when you're using this, you probably set the thermostat no more than 90 degrees and run at 90 degrees, try and keep the trigger pulled. If you do let go of the trigger and then pull again, it will probably go up about 110 at maximum. You don't want to be going above it. The, these items won't take any more than 120 degrees. Now even inside this at the moment we've got the 15 degree spray patterns. So when working on hard surfaces such as tarmac, you wouldn't use it, this on it. You'd use these other smaller jets that are 25 degrees. You just simply unscrew them and you make sure that line is in line with the bar. Straight line when you take them out and change them over both of them. But there, 25 degrees, the, the ones that are spare, they are for tarmac. This is for concrete hard surfaces of these jets that's in there at the moment with 15 degree spray pattern.